Hi, my name is Julie, and I'm one of the violinists in Tapo Music, and today's treatise is J.J. Quantz's Flute Treatise, written in 1752, and is a flute treatise, and I'm a violinist, um, but there's a lot more in it than just flute music, and if you are a flute player, run and get this book immediately. Jed Wentz, who is a very close friend of mine and an incredible flute player, came to teach at TBSI a couple summers ago. And one day he cracked me up when he said, Julie, honestly, I don't know why they need me here. We can just read quants and fi find out everything we need to know. But I think they needed him. There's tons of information in this book for everybody, not just flute players. Quance was an incredible teacher, and his goal was to train skilled and creative and intelligent musicians, not just mechanical players. So he talks to everybody, from flute players to violinists playing in orchestra or playing solos, and what's the role of the viola, the cellos, double bass, keyboard players. So the book begins with some excellent advice. In the introduction, in section 8, he says, He who wishes to excel in music must feel in himself a perpetual and untiring love for it, a willingness and eagerness to spare neither industry nor pains, and to bear steadfastly all the difficulties that present themselves in this mode of life. Which is advice that I've given to students many, many times over, and it's re it really feels like he's writing this book yesterday, especially considering what's going on right now with coronavirus. And we have to do a lot of bearing steadfastly and a lot of working with untiring zeal for what we love. One of my favorite chapters in this book is the chapter on ornamentation called On the Manner of Playing an Adagio. And here he gives advice on where and how to add ornamentation. And I like that depending on the kind of movement, he tells you to add more or less complicated ornamentation. So for example, in the Sicilianas, he says because this is based on a Sicilian dance. Very few graces should be introduced other than some slurred 16th notes um, or some appoggiaturas. Here's one of his in ornamentations and he says, I certainly do not expect the style of variations from a raw beginner who does not yet know how to play a plain air correctly. So his advice is learn how to play the simple um, the simple structure of the music, and then add the ornaments. So he, on the top he writes the simple. And then he adds some ornaments. Chapter 16 is called What a Flutist Must Observe If He Plays in Public Concerts. And this is not just for flute players. It's got a, he's got a lot of great advice. You can tell that he was an amazing musician himself from this particular chapter, I think. So in section five, he goes, In a spacious place, whether an opera house, a hall, or a place where two, three, or more rooms are open into one another, he must never tune the flute at a distance from the other players, but always close by. For the sound of the notes becomes lower at a distance, and the further the distance, the lower it becomes. Although he may believe he has tuned quite truly at a distance, he will find that he is too low when he approaches the other players. In section 12, he says, if you're playing a solo, and the tutti comes in in the wrong tempo, don't freak out. Just play your solo in the right tempo and the orchestra will follow, which I thought was pretty good advice. In section 18 of that same chapter, he says, if you're playing in a really big space with a lot of resonance and you have a big group of people, Always choose music that has a very slow harmonic rhythm and lots of unisons. Otherwise, the music will be 
unintelligible. Great advice. In section 51, he says, it is much more advantageous for a musician always to keep some of his skill in reserve so that he can give his listeners more than one surprise than display all of his skill at once so that we have nothing more to hear from him. So don't show off too early in your concert. Oh, this is a good one. Chapter 17, section 30 of um, the second part. If you're a violinist and you're playing with the mute, he says, the greatest force of the bow should not be used and you must avoid the open strings as much as possible. In slurred notes, the bow may be pressed rather firmly against the strings, but if the melody requires a frequent repetition of strokes, a short light stroke animated by a kind of inner stress produces a better effect than a long drawn out or dragging one. Above all, however, you must regulate yourself in accordance with the idea that you have to express. Good advice. I didn't really, I've never thought about not using open strings with the mute, but I like it. There's so much great advice in this book. Take a look. You can om open almost any page and get a great idea. Have fun.